When you see an aspect of personality respond dramatically to medication, you start thinking about animal studies. When animals become depressed, they stop playing with other monkeys if they're youngsters, and they tend to groom less if they're older. They look like they're having trouble eating, and they seem to be lacking sleep as well. Furthermore, their faces have a sad and lethargic look. So the monkeys basically show their emotions by their faces and their postures. And when an individual is in a depressed state, it's really quite obvious. Researchers at the National Institutes of Health Animal Center have found connections between depression in monkeys and in humans. They can measure the results of psychological trauma in decreased levels of serotonin, the same neurochemical that Prozac boosts. 20% of monkeys, it seems, are prone to depression. For humans, just like the rhesus monkeys, about 20% of the population seems to be unusually prone to severe or extreme reactions to relatively mildly th stressful circumstances. And the physiological patterns that are reported in these humans, these kids, are virtually identical to what we see in our monkeys. It looks in the animal models as if you can traumatize an animal in a small way and nothing will be visible. The animal will look perfectly normal but if you step in again a number of years later, uh, you, if you put the animal in a challenging situation or traumatize the animal again, it will look different. The animal will look uh, more anxious, more compulsive, more depressed, less able to respond to novel stimuli. So the animal is carrying some invisible mark of the earlier trauma. And it may be that some of the patients who, whom we see, who are ordinary psychotherapy patients, likewise carry some invisible a biological scar from early trauma. We have given monkeys who are showing depressive episodes a Prozac-like drug, and the effects seem to be similar to what has been reported in humans. I take one a day, basically like when I take a vitamin. I would almost say that I'm a new person because one of the things that I dealt with um, in, in probably about the first year or so that I was on the drug was encountering new situations or old situ situations but thinking of myself as a new person and wondering hmm how is this person going to react to this situation I had no idea um, every experience was um, a new one and it was as though at some times it was as though I was a voyeur you know to myself Good. wondering hmm you know how is this person gonna react boy I can't wait to see <laughs> but it's very dramatic to see people change on these medicines and I think the question is raised what is stable about the self how do you know you're yourself if you feel a way you've never felt before and start feeling that way in a stable way? Uh, what is true self? Are people able to identify true self? That there are a host of these questions that are raised by this particular medicine, Prozac. And something that I've come to uh, believe is that medicines have personalities. And the next medicine that's exciting and comes along may raise different questions, may highlight questions that are quite different than the ones being highlighted by Prozac. I think the other thing I would say is that uh, Probably dogs increase our serotonin levels. I mean, it's uh, nice to be uh, loved and have some interactions and so on. I'm Mr. Blue. When you say you're sorry, then turn around heading for the lights of town, hurting me through and through. You got it locked on. Good times. Great oldies. 99 KXA. And you know, Gare, I'm not so sure that I like this new title from Wenatchee. Prozac Capital of the World? I think I'm happier with the uh, old title. The Apple Capital of the World or even the Buckle of the Power Belt Works. Ka-chink. Stay tuned. We'll be thinking of new titles for Wenatchee. And remember, an apple a day keeps the Prozac doctor away. I'm painting it too. are being
beginning to understand that there is something going on that's a little bit different. That there's some technology out there, both psychological and medical. That there's our new medicines called SSRIs. That there's psychotherapy, cognitive therapy, that can change the way they perceive their world and change the way they think and change the way they function. Uh, with their environment out there and they seem to be doing so well my clients there's a there's a certain sense of I want to let the rest of the world know about it I started a program with uh, dr. Jim Goodwin in that program we're using um, Prozac and we're also using his cognitive therapy and I guess it's safe to say that um, I probably wouldn't be here talking today if it wouldn't have been for that program because the thoughts of walking out behind one of these hills and just uh, taking care of all the pain with my 38 was getting to be a daily occurrence. And I don't have those thoughts anymore. We had a son that was born with severe medical problems in 1985. Two months later, I suffered an on-the-job injury, which put me in a vocational rehabilitation program, which went a year. Uh, at the end of that year, we had another child born, a daughter, who was born with the same medical conditions as our son was born uh, born with, and uh, we were constantly going in and out of the hospitals with this situation. Uh, my wife and a lady friend that was visiting her that day were raped in our house uh, by a masked gunman. Um, things just kind of steamrolled from there. Uh, our, our daughter, who was born uh, with the problems, she passed away in 1989. My wife and I divorced in 1991. We tended to go our own ways. I guess some of these things draw people closer together. In our case, it kind of put a wedge in us. Um, after the divorce, I was, realized I was really dealing with a lot of thoughts of suicide that I never had before. And it got to be a daily occurrence. I was really irrational. And before anybody would say anything, or criticize me, I would criticize myself. Every time somebody leaned over and, you're talking about me, you're talking about me, crying class, you know, everybody was talking about me behind my back. Everybody was saying bad things about me. Nobody liked me. Um, my mom, I was just, you know, not fun to be around. I mean, I couldn't even stand being around myself. And so I assumed other people didn't want to be around me and they didn't when I was acting that way. I went to see Jim Goodwin for the first time for marital counseling, primarily, to try and save what was left of my marriage. And our biggest thought at that time was putting Martha in foster care because she was so disruptive to the entire family. And I began to have changes. I began to see things differently and to not react to Martha. And, and she tried real hard to push my buttons and I'd sit back and laugh at her or I wouldn't react as I normally had. And she said I was seeing a quack and that I was out of my mind. And, and finally she went and saw him too. And she had seen so many changes in me that she went to see him too and agreed to, to try the medication. It's answered a lot of questions as to why I did what I did, why I thought the way I thought, and why I reacted to things and situations the way I did. Um, at the time, everything was going on and I was reacting uh, or addressing situations. I was looking at them this way. I can now see the bigger picture. The memories are still there. The, 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 the things that I dealt with are still there. The things that depress me are still there. They're in the, they're in the back. They don't, they don't come around front. They're not in my view anymore. Um, but I know that they're still there. A lot of the things that I had read and studied had said that, that you create your own reality, that reality is created from your own thoughts. And it really sounded great, but I could never, ever put it to work in my life. And after the Prozac and the therapy, it's become fun to create my own reality. Life is not a pain anymore. It's a, it's, um, a challenge. It's uh, watching life as it goes by and choosing how I choose to react to it and how I choose to let it affect me rather than being buffeted about by the circumstances of my life reacting to all of them. It's all the way you display something to the world. And Prozac is being displayed positively and it's reinforcing positive attitude. And I can't say that's definitely negative, but some people are going to say, I don't like that. Some people are going to go in the flow with the flow, and some people are going to go with the flow and still have their opinions like I do. Because 
I mean, it's like the people of today's society give you two choices. You go with the flow or you get sucked down the drain. Times are changing. They, it really is. It's, it's happening. And unless we wake up to it, if we stay in denial, it'll pass us by. Or it'll pass you by. It might not pass your children by, but it might pass you by unless you wake up. This revolution, it started five years or so ago. It took 200 years to double our lifespan. Maybe it'll take us another 200 years before we double our mental health span. But um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're aware of it, though, why not take advantage of it now? So you're, you are a revolutionary? I don't know if I'm revolutionary. I see things differently now. Um, I, I do. I look at the world differently. I can't help it. I'm different. I have a chemical up here that changes me. I think differently. I use the, the precepts of, of this cognitive therapy we talk about. It's different, though, than the cognitive therapy that people talk about without the medicine up there. People look at things differently. Yeah. I don't know if I'm revolutionary. I'm just different. Some patients don't appreciate Goodwin's difference. The courts appointed him to break the deadlock between Heidi Summers and her ex-husband over visiting hours for their children. What really happened was I went in for my session and I was very prepared. Um, I had m all of my legal documents. I had pictures of my kids so he could see who I was talking about. I had everything that I thought one needed to properly present why I was there. And he didn't talk to me about my children. He talked to me about um, depression. He talked to me about suicide. He talked to me about all sorts of things that were not relevant to my children. I very clearly told her, you have what we call a, probably a moderate level of depression at this point in time. And you're really pretty stressed out. Before I can do a cogent evaluation of you, I'm going to have to get, have some treatment for you. I'm going to have to see who you really are because I'm not seeing the lady that I need to evaluate at this point. You know, you're going to be less than an adequate parent unless you get yourself some help. And you can either see me or go see somebody else. So finally, at the, at the end of about an hour and a half, um, he brought in a Vietnam vet. And he said, now, I want you to meet somebody. I want you to meet somebody. And he brought in this man. And the man brought his wife in. And they said that they, too, had been seeing Jim Goodwin and uh, had been recommended to go on Prozac, but that they had not wanted to go on Prozac. <clears throat> well, anyway, he says, um, he says, tell Heidi that you didn't want to go on Prozac. And, and he says, I didn't want to go on Prozac. And then he says, and tell Heidi that you can't live without Prozac in your life. And, and Marty says, I can't live without Prozac in my life. And he says, now tell Heidi. And then the guy says, no, just a minute. I just came back from Hawaii. And I didn't take any Prozac when I was in Hawaii. And then Jim Goodwin says, but now that you're back in Wenatchee, you need to be on Prozac. I need to be on Prozac. I didn't breach any confidentiality other than uh, the lady said it would be fine if they came in and the people talked about their depression. She didn't tell them what, what her issues were. And I didn't tell them what her issues were. But the clients came in and did talk about what it was like and that it, not to be afraid that it wouldn't hurt you. And I, finally, at that point, I got up and started laughing. And I said, this is fine for all of you people. But I certainly, certainly don't need to go on any type of chemical to come to any type of monumental conclusions, because we are just talking about whether you come home at 5 or 7. And I don't even need to take an aspirin to come to that type of a decision. So I started to get up and leave. And he's chasing me out the door. And he has a stack of pamphlets and articles from Time Magazine and Newsweek, and he's got his handwritten diagram that he's written up of serotonin running through my veins and all this. And he's chasing me out the door with these things, and he says, yes, it's, there's nothing wrong with you. Please don't misunderstand. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you can feel so much better if you're on Prozac. And I'm thinking to myself, I just can't hardly wait to get to my attorney and get this idiot removed from my case.